Okay, so uh, the last match of the Pacific uh, Contenders had uh, Chaos Theory as Singapore team, the only Singapore team in con Pacific Contenders fighting against Detonator Korea. And Detonator Korea is uh, a full Korean roster. They they got top four in OPC in the old OPC, and they they were number one if I'm not wrong in the Open Division in the recent Open Division, the most recent Open Division. So let's take a look at these two teams. And okay, I I've already watched uh, the the match, and I I'll say that both teams are mechanically gifted. Uh, for Detonator KR, you have Dahim of course, and on the side of uh, Chaos Theory, GNX is a pretty good, is a great tracer actually. So, and both teams make similar mistakes. They fail to converge on a target, leading to very, very messy brawls instead of um, instead of proper fights. So, in, instead of seeing very neat organized uh, attempts, right? You, 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 you. <laughs> what is happening? What's going on? So, instead of seeing like neat organized attempts of uh, of engagers. You tend to see very very messy brawls where you see team fragment into two three different portions going for two three different targets and then fight tends to last really long uh, whether engaged on by chaos theory or by or by um, detonator kia so let's take a look at numbani where numbani rewards organized uh, team fights right if you have a good engage and after you engage on point a let me just get out my epic pen if you if you engage on point A, a mark of good team is the ability to engage on point A powerfully. So let's say you engage on point A as a dive comp powerfully. The mark of a good team is a, is a team that can transit from engaging on point A to point B. So let's say you're hitting on point A, right? Okay, let's not use the word point. You're, you're, you're jumping on their mercy, right? And then after the mercy dies, or let's say the mercy flies away and there's no way you can catch the mercy, what you do between uh, aiming the the the, the, the 76 maybe the secondary target right and what you do between transiting between targeting the mercy to targeting a 76 matters like what do you do in this in this meantime because what happens here determines whether you guys whether the, the team win or lose the fight because if you don't transit properly either one a 76 is not going to get much pressure and, and, and be able to perform or two uh, the mercy can do even more because you, you try to dive the mercy and fail. Now, because you failed to dive the mercy, your HP drops, everything drops, you lose your cooldown, you drop your HP drops, and then you are in a very, very vulnerable position. So how you transit here, how much damage you take here, and who you are targeting, from, uh, and what how you're moving, really, really matters in this team. And I think both teams' mistakes are similar in that they are unable to transit from a, tar what, a target to another, from a, a single priority to a secondary priority, and that leads to really, like I said, really long team fight and massive brawls that that's not yeah that's really untidy. So I'm going to show you guys what I mean here. So there are also micro positioning errors where where after they go in for a target and they're trying to retreat, it doesn't really get executed very very well. So okay, we're going to see uh, a firecom. So in the days of uh, uh old contenders and apex, right when firecoms are played and firecoms are generally played by mm, American teams. American teams love playing Farah, and in the earlier seasons, maybe two, three seasons ago, Farah was almost always played, right? And then they were used to play at the back side here, from the back, like round the back. And why do they use the, the back? Because when you play a Farah, right? Uh, generally, you play Farah as a opportunistic comp. So what I mean is that you don't always jump on the enemy, and then you start to fire on them. They they used to do that early in the Farah meta, but <clears throat> the current Farah meta it's one of a poke meta. So you play until someone gets poked and someone gets low. For example, you keep poking the enemy until the enemy use bubble. So you keep poking the enemy Winston, right? Until the enemy Winston use his bubble. And after he uses his bubble, now you can engage on the Winston and then take the Winston out because he used his bubble. Another way you can do it is maybe, let's say, the Farah hits a direct rocket on the Anna. Anna drops to half. Winston's going to call. Uh, maybe your Winston will say, Hey, look, the Anna is really, really low. We can use this opportunity to jump in now and then you go in for the Anna, right? So there's two ways you can, uh, that you can play your fire away. It's opportunistic, you force the cooldown out and then you jump the person without the cooldown. Or you go for, you land a direct rocket hit and then you go for the low HP character. Rally in this current meta, rally is far used in a way where you just jump in. Like, you know, you just turn the corner and then you just jump in and then you just engage. So, which is why near uh, it's still pretty recent when they used to play Farah in like any contenders and everything, they will use the back, right? Because when they use, when they use the back, they can rain fire from further away, from a safer distance, 
and still contest the point at the same time because uh, this allows the tank, your your own tank, to touch the point and maybe the tracer to touch the point, hiding around the payload. And then the fire will be flying in the air, right? Over here, shooting rocket onto the high ground. Because most people use this, most people on the other team use this high ground. So what happens is uh, you are using a lot of space and for the enemy to engage, they need to they need to do multiple things, right? It's it's hard for the enemy to counter this. They first of all they need to counter the Farah in the sky, and the Farah the is of course pocketed by the the the, farm, uh, the the Mercy, so it's not easy for a solitary seventy six to counter the 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 Farah. Another thing they need to do is they need to contest the point, right? They need to contest the point without dying because uh, now because the enemy is on the point, you need to contest the point. You will give them uh, ticks. So there are many many things that uh, the enemy team needs to do to counter this variation where you have a far in the air and then maybe tanks on the point and maybe a tracer taking space to, 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 to punish the tanks when the tank moves in. But we see Chaos Theory not using this style of play, instead they are going to go for a pure dive which is not totally wrong, it's just not really uh, used all that much. But Chaos Theory we know is a very very raw, very very mechanically driven, very very aggressive team. So seeing uh, Chaos Theory do it isn't, isn't too surprising because we, we know they like to fight and we know they like to fight a lot. So we're going to see uh, the Farah turns the corner and then, and then, and then Zess and Zess and Distrain go onto the high ground, right? And then, and then of course because, because this happens and their, their target is of course the 76, to force the 76 away from the high ground. I'm going to use red for Chaos Theory uh, and blue for Detonator Kea. The 76 is of course forced to drop and same with Anna. The Anna is also forced to drop. And here I would like to point out that uh, KR, uh, Detonator KR is playing an NI and a Mercy, which is a very very strange pick. So when you play an NI and a Mercy, right, uh, it's it's a very very dangerous uh, combination because one, you don't have defensive ultimates, uh, which means that the, the moment that Chaos Theory gets their defensive ultimate, and then uh, they can go for an overextended character. So let's say Chaos Theory has an, a sound barrier, right? Uh, I, I know I'm still rambling, I'll go to the fight in a while, but we, uh, we need to understand what this means, this uh, support. <coughs> selection means because it it has an influence on the subsequent team fight. So the moment that Chaos Theory the moment Chaos Theory has their sound barrier and let's say Detonator Chaos 76 is playing very very far away and very safe, let's say they're playing over here, right? Uh, let, uh all the way at the back. I mean down the slope all the way at the back. If you have sound barrier, it enables the uh, Chaos Theory to chase the 76 and generally when you chase the 76 of course the enemy team will peel for the 76 and then your tank will get punished right so if Zess and Distrain chase the 76 Zess and Distrain can get can die because uh, 76 will just run away and then the enemy DPS and the enemy tanks will of course uh, punish the Chaos Theory tanks but when you have sound barrier what it enables you to do is it allows you to overextend to punish an enemy so that's the best way of using sound barrier. You let your whole team overextend, go for a very aggressive dive, and use sound barrier to protect them as they go, uh, go very very greedily and punish uh, an enemy. And then the only way to counter this is, of course, another defensive ultimate on the side of the enemy team, right? But then this this time, uh, Detonator Kia is playing using an Ana and a Mercy. So what this means is, it's like telling Chaos Theory if uh, it's like telling Chaos Theory, hey, look, the moment you guys have a defensive out, we will lose as long as you guys play well, right? So let's take a look at what happens. So they force the 76 down. Now we we, we, we got the support uh, explanation out of the way. They force the support down, uh, 76 and, and Anna down. And of course, there's no way Chaos Theory can drop and chase because uh, no one on the end, uh, Detonator Care is low enough for them to, to chase. And even if they chase the Winston, chances are the Winston is going to get healed up really, really fast. And then, then Chaos Theory will get punished. So Chaos Theory is going to make the right decision here. Chaos Theory is going to drop back onto the point. Uh, Chaos Theory is going to drop back on the point and hold the point and let uh, Detonator Kea come to them. And this this is good play because now Detonator Kea needs to come in and touch the point to contest. And, 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 and what Chaos Theory need to do now is to hold this corner, right? They need to hold this corner so with this area here, uh, maybe with, with this area here, the Winston needs to stand because Winston now is uh, full HP. Winston needs to stand near the corner, right? So to force the enemy not to take space. So to take this space, they need to punish the Winston. They need to punish the Winston. And uh, and force the Winston back first. So that's that's Winston job. Now Winston job will just to, will be to hold the fort and try to alternate with this strain. So this strain will just uh, defensive matrix Winston. When Winston is low, he'll jump back and then develop move forward and hope that during this opportunity, this 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 short time period, ambition can get uh can get some damage in, maybe on the on the on the on the Anna, and then they can dive. In the same at the same time, so maybe Chaos Theory want to do something like this. They have a Winston here, they have a Diva here. Uh, Ambition can you know float on the high ground with uh, with Savior, right? So float with Savior Pharmacy, 
and then maybe land a direct rocket or they can just go for the NR straight away. So they can they can just what they should do is just reset on this point, go look for an opportunity and then go for a dive or, or go for a kill when I said like there's an opportunity, right? So here I think uh, I felt that there's okay, this is definitely a little bit too far. And uh, this this actually makes a difference. Because this distance actually make a difference. Because if you if you move back as a Winston, because you are still full HP, but if you move back so far as a Winston, uh, if you move back too far as a Winston, what happens here is you don't you no longer have any corner to, to pick through. If you hold this area, this area as a Winston, I mean you hold at where the X is, uh, and the enemy tanks are forced to hold, like, let's say they are forced to hold here, right? They are forced to hold here because they can't shoulder in. They will have to punish you first, and then you can always move back. But if you give them the space early on, like like this, right? If you give them the space early on, now Zest is going to get punished really hard. So let's look at Zest HP. Zest is going to drop really, really far, really, really hard. And he he's 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 not jumping anyone. He's just jumping to, into the air to get killed by the the, the mercy. Because if you jump backwards, it, you you're still within line of sight. If you jump upwards, then uh yeah, your mercy can kill you. And while this is happening, while Zest is getting killed back up, right? Uh, Ambition went all the way to the back line. Ambition went all the way to the back line and killed Apache. So Apache is now behind Dahim. Apache is now behind Dahim. But uh, remember what happened. The support, right? Savior, the Chaos Theory Mercy is still healing the, the, the Distrain, right? Distrain and Zest. They're still healing the two tanks. Because Detonator Chaos is trying to dive the tank right now. So even though Ambition killed Apache, he's alone without a pocket. So it's going to be very, very easy for Dahim to take him out. So this is what I mean by very messy brawls. Because uh, what should happen is the pharmacy take position, and then of course the, the tanks uh, try to look for opportunity and go for Ap Apache together. So Zest and Distrain, maybe they can go for like the, the NR, right? Because they, the, they don't have a Lucio. Like I said, they don't have a, a, a Zen or a Lucio. I mean, the, the main thing is they don't have a Lucio, so there's no speed boost. It's going to be really, really easy to catch uh, either Dahim or Apache. They just need to see that, that, that small window of opportunity, right? But it's missed it. Uh, Ambition saw it, but Ambition got traded out because, of course, they lost the pocket because they had to heal the tanks, right? So th in this case, Detonator KR played really well here in punishing the enemy tanks, in punishing Zess and Distrait for taking, uh, for being a little bit, for giving up a little bit too much space. And while Ambition did manage to punish Apache, he was there alone without a support, without the pocket, so he's gonna die straight away. So Detonator KR played better, uh, and 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 of course punish Chaos Theory for their, for their mistakes. So we're gonna see the next fight, and the next fight is what I call the. We it's what we talked about just now. I said that legend had some. The moment legend has some barrier, that only the KR is gonna lose because the moment the legend has some barrier, you literally encounter every single thing. You can counter the sound barrier when Dahim sounds ba sound barriers, right? Legend can literally sound barrier, and it counters Dahim, and it doesn't just counter Dahim. It kills two birds with one stone, so you can counter Dahim and punish the character of the enemy team. So you counter Dahim, and you can either kill Dahim while he's uh, while he's tactical visoring, or you can go for someone else. So that that's what happens if you don't have defense spell. So we see uh, Chaos Theory going for the high ground fight again. Uh, Dahim drops, of course. This time they are not, not even on high ground. Dahim is at the back, and you see Bleeds trying to go for the back line. He goes for pulse bomb, misses misses the pulse bomb, and Dahim at this moment tactical visor, right? So this is what did I say just now? I say that if you tactical visor, go straight for the sound barrier because when you sound barrier, you literally counter Dahim while you are able to turn a defensive retreat into an engage. So you can literally engage and counter Dahim at the same time. So we are going to see a uh, legend sound barrier, and here we are going to see very messy fighting. I keep saying that uh, that the fight was very messy, where there's not much convergence on the side of Chaos Theory and even on I mean and even Detonator Chaos, even though they won the map. So we're gonna see. Okay, let's let us take a look at what let's just take a look at what happens. Zest goes for seventy six, jumps back out. Uh, GNX goes for seventy six, uh, uh, with Diva, and then it goes. Uh, they use the bomb, and then they, they go back to the point. You can see there's there's very little convergence here. So while it's true that uh, that the Mercy does have the the Valkyrie, but it was if let's say it, at this moment right when Legend used the Legend used the uh, Legend used the the Sun Bearer, and here Winston goes for for for. For for seventy six and then transit to Anna and here GNX can you see GNX GNX is going for seventy six if GNX costs right now that he says like I'm going for seventy six I'm going for seventy six uh and 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 Zess also coordinates the his next jump because the jumps on I uh, two three seconds cooldown it's on a very very short cooldown and if they coordinate their their engage onto Dahim Dahim is at one hundred forty HP because uh yeah he 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 just got jumped on by the Winston and then because the Mercy had to pocket the Anna. If 
Zest and GNX coordinate their, their dive onto Dahim. It's very possible for Dahim to, to, to die to, to die before Mercy can actually pocket Dahim properly and heal him back to full health. So you see, Gen X is gonna drop Dahim to, to freaking 20 HP, but at this moment, at this moment, uh there's no one else aiming Dahim. Only GNX is aiming Dahim. So right, so it's the Mercy literally just heals. There was a small little window of opportunity right there, right there to kill Dahim. But uh, because the, 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 the convergence was very weak, it, it wasn't like uh, Gen X saying, let's go for a Dahim, and then Gen X blinking at the same time, Winston jump in, and then they, 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 they just hit Dahim together. There, there isn't such thing, there isn't, we don't see such a thing, we just see Zest going in, uh, hitting Dahim once or twice, trying to zone him away from the point, uh, then after that transiting to Anna, right? And at this moment when he transits to Anna, we see Gen X going in, so it's very very messy, and, 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 and it's just really really messy, right? And finally, finally, uh, Detonator Kia makes a mistake because right now, remember who is over here? Who is over here? Uh, which member of Detonator Kia is over here? We have the Mercy pocketing the Anna, and we have also the Dahim over there, right? And then we see Krong on the high ground, so we see Krong on the high ground. So what? Where is Modern and Blitz? Modern and Blitz are on the point, right? They're on the point fighting the enemy team. So Detonator Kia is going to make their first mistake, and their mistake is not really a mistake per se. It's just a a, a mistake in team comp. They have a Mercy that is going to fly he's going to ga you can see over here because he and he has to ga because of the of the bomb over here so the moment you can see sleepy bear over here and sleepy bear is going to ga into to blitz over here when you ga what you're saying as a mercy is you're saying i'm dead there's nothing i can do right now because the moment you ga you are out of an ability a cooldown a, a, a vital cooldown that puts you away safely from the enemy team so chaos theory is going to spot this chaos theory is going to see this and they're gonna punish Sleepy Bear because the moment J, you can just say Sleepy Bear, Mercy, 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 use J. Let's go for Mercy, and you're gonna see that uh, happen exactly. Uh, Gen X is gonna go for Mercy, uh, chase Mercy all the way, and punish Mercy accordingly. And this is gonna be the first kill on the side of Chaos Theory, right? And then, yeah, this is gonna be the first kill on the side of Chaos Theory. And and I think the casters, uh, AVRL and uh, Liquid Pixie, actually said like, "Whoa, this is such a long fight." Uh, uh, Chaos Theory needs to converge onto uh, Detonator Kia, and that's obviously not happening. So that's why the fight. That's why the fight took so long, right? The Sound Barrel didn't clinch the fight. In fact, what clinched the fight was uh, the 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 Diva Bomb forcing the Mercy to use Guardian Angel, and then and then finally successfully managing to punish the 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 Mercy, leading to the first pick and leading to to, to, to the. The win. So I have no idea why Detonator Kia decide to decided to run run like a an Anna Zen. I feel like an Anna Zen would uh, sorry an Anna Mercy. I feel like a Lucio Zen would work. A uh, Lucio, I don't know, man. Anna Zen would work. I just don't agree with her. I don't really agree. With... Okay, I don't really like Anna Zen, but whatever. That's my personal preference. I I don't feel that Anna Mercy is a strong combo. I feel that that's a pretty weak combo. And, and and yeah. So what happens when uh, Chaos Theory kept the point is they played they played very intelligently. It's a basic play, but it's an intelligent play. So what happens is when they kept the point. Oh why is why is my video like that? Uh, when they kept the point, they, they, they pushed out this is raid, right? This is raid team, this is GNX and Distrain. So you have Distrain, Zaz and GNX playing on the high ground while the enemy push uh, while their team pushes the payload. So what this stops, right? This stops the detonator KR from fighting Chaos Theory at the choke. And what do I mean by the choke? I, I mean right here. Let me see. Uh, let me see. Okay, the, this this method, uh, this position that Chaos Theory takes for, uh, stops uh, Detonator, Detonator Kia from taking this choke over here. Because once you take this choke, it's very very powerful because uh, with a Sombra holding like at the back line, with like the Winston and Diva holes at the axis, right? It allows the, 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 the 76 and, 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 and Sombra to hold further behind. It's very easy for them to punish the choke, right? So, uh, because Chaos Theory did this, it's a very smart play, and 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 will prevent Detonator Kia from taking the battle position for their for their team comp. So Pascom is going to land on the Winston, and he's going to move behind and actually, <laughs> and actually takes out the Lucio, and not really not really Detonator's Kia fought per se. I I I, I don't know, man. They 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 could have not jumped, but I mean, an ultimate was used. Gen had to use an ultimate and good positioning there by GNX. GNX has been on fire the whole game because he landed a pulse bomb because he was on high ground. So GNX was actually on high ground over here, right? Because uh, when Distrain, Winston, and and when Distrain and Winston was over here, 
GNX was also on high ground, and then when the enemy jumps, it was a, he could land a very easy pulse bomb. So great play by GNX, taking space and, and landing the pulse bomb, because that pulse bomb really managed to secure that fight. If not, there was still a possibility of Detonator KR engaging with Tactical Visor, and then and then and then pushing Chaos Theory back to, to the choke point. But because they, 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 they landed a pulse bomb onto the onto Winston, they had to give up that space. And just just overall really well played by Detonator KR. So the next fight is the tr truly important one, and why do I say the next fight is the truly important one? Because this is going to be the first fight that Apache is going to get a transcendence. Because just now they were playing Anna and Mercy, right? So there was and it, and they swapped out. So this is the first time that a, a support in on the side of Detonator Care is going to get a defensive ultimate. And when you get a defensive ultimate, fights tend to go very, very, uh, very, very aggressively. It gets it gets very intense because. The, one team is going to use the sound barrier, uh, one team is going to use defensive out, the other team is going to follow up with defensive out, and who uses it better uh, tend to win the first fight, uh, tend to win the fight, but even then it doesn't really matter because Chaos Theory could just, you know, regroup and come back with an out advantage. So this is where it really tests both teams' metal, whether it tests uh, the usage of ultimate, it tests positioning, it tests ultimate advantage, it tests the discipline in using ultimates. So this is where we're going to see both teams fight. Uh, like for the first time technically to me because that's when both teams are going to have defensive ultimate okay let's take a look at the positioning first of a uh, of a uh, chaos theory so chaos theory is holding high ground chaos theory is holding high ground and they're holding high ground because they can drop right and this is a, once again very smart positioning by chaos theory uh but the execution isn't that great but let's talk about what happened so they know that Zen is highly unlikely for Zen if they if they know right like Ark uh, Ark from New York Excelsior he can tell ultimate within like five percent point. So anyway, it's not that hard to know that Zen probably is close to having a transcendence, but probably and I, I say that I say that uh, that probably because I'm not sure whether they know of it. They know that Zen may or may not have transcendence, but even if let's say Zen has transcendence, the game plan has to be to dive the Zen because if he doesn't have transcendence and you kill the Zen. Then great, you stop the Zen from having tr from trancing into the fight. And if he has transcendence and he trans, then great, you reset and then you come back uh, into the fight maybe with sound barrier later on if you if you need if need be right. So I like that they take high ground because the moment the tank goes into contest the point, the uh, the enemy detonator chaos tank goes into contest the point, chaos theory tanks can just go down and engage onto the Zen right. So we're gonna see that happening here, where the the tanks, uh, I I'll say detonator KR tank pushed out a little bit too far. They went up for the dive, and this is going to open an opportunity for Chaos Theory tank to punish the Zen. They can literally drop right now, right now, and punish the tank. They can literally have get in a three man dive. They can. What do I mean by three man dive? They can have uh, GNX diving the Zen, Diva diving the Zen, and Winston diving the Zen. Right. Okay. One one last thing. Who is Krong and Modern diving? They are diving, these two, these two tanks, they are diving Legend, the Lucio. Just like how Chaos Theory could have dived the enemy Zen, right? And and then they're gonna further kill the Lucio because uh, Xavier is going to Valkyrie. So we have the both support of Chaos Theory here in the air, right now, in the air. Pocketing each other, healing each other, I mean mostly Mercy healing uh, Lucio and keeping Lucio alive. And, and here we're gonna see uh, Apache drop really really low, you see. Look, let's look at this. Look at Apache HP. Look at 82%. Boom! Look at that. He's really, really low, but he doesn't die. And let's look at why he doesn't die. Because there was once again no convergence on the side of Chaos Theory Tank. So we have Zest and Distrain. We have Zest and Distrain. Uh, and both of them are playing counter engage, right? They want, they want to protect their Lucio. But the thing is, they shouldn't find a need to protect their Lucio. Heck it! They, just, just trust your Lucio uh, to, to survive. And even if your Lucio do doesn't survive, I think it's super worth it to take out the, the, the Zen instead. Take out the Zen. Take out the Zen because you have the tracer. You guys are already in position, right? Chaos Theory is already in position. You have the tracer here. Look, that's the tracer here. You literally can they literally can just drop. They don't even need to use their jump, right? They literally can just drop on the point. Uh land maybe like a bit of a bit a bit of a uh take away a bit of a Zen's HP and let GNX deal with the rest. Exactly what happened here because GNX almost took out Zen. Look at that, he's so low. That is just solely on, I think. GNX if I'm not wrong, I think that was literally just GNX trying to one clip the, the Zen, right? If the tank had converged on the Zen, they literally could have killed Apache and then still had the time to jump back and then counter engage onto the enemy uh, tank, Krong and Modern, right? But they didn't do so. So so so, so they are gonna... Yeah, nothing's gonna happen here. Detonator Care is gonna win the fight. 
Because Dahim is now going to use his tactical vice and punish GNX, and GNX is wants to get the trick uh, the Zen because he almost got a Zen. He overstayed uh, because I don't know maybe he thought the tanks would help him or something. He overstayed and he gets taken out by the the, the, the tactical vice. And now Dahim is can do this for free, right? Now, now Dahim can just like tactical vice for free. So even if let's say uh, Krong uh, Krong out didn't get. The Fire, even if let's say uh, Krong's Diva Bomb didn't get ambition, I chances are that Detonator KR is gonna win because they they, they are gonna have Fire, uh, they are gonna have like Sombra out as well. So they have Sombra out, they have tactical visors. It's pretty impossible for Chaos Theory to continue their push, especially because they already use their they already use the sound barrier. Yep. Yep. So just bad play overall by uh, just bad out usage and, and, and positioning by Chaos Theory where you, you try to protect your support. But your support is literally a Lucio and a and a, and a, and a Farah, right? So if you play like a Zen and a, a, a Farah uh, Zen and a Mercy, maybe you can go back to Pew, but if you're playing like a Lucio and a, a Mercy, it's sometimes you don't really need to Pew, you can just go straight for the dive. Yeah. It's not always the enemy jumps the back line and you pew. Most of the time, maybe like 70% of the time you wanna pew, right? But when you are on attack and, 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 and you have like two supports out, you have Valkyrie and Sound Barrier coming up. You have Valkyrie definitely and then your Sound Barrier is like at 95%. You can you can trust that the, you can try to trust the, the support. Because if you trust the support to get that 5% alone, it allows for a much more powerful dive rather than than, than giving the support a crutch, going back to peel for the support and then in the end losing the fight because losing the fight because you guys use uh, because Chaos Theory used cooldowns to, to to protect a support duo that Obviously, didn't need protecting. They were pretty much at full HP. Uh, Legend dropped to half, but after that, he he was pretty much saved the whole thing. But the both tank had to use their cooldown to to protect Legend, and that, that meant that once you use cooldown to protect someone, once you use your cooldowns to do A, you're not going to be able to do B, and that's what caused Detonator KR to lose, right? And you have you see you have like GNX going for the backline, and you have like everyone doing different things. You have GNX harassing and and almost killing the Zen, and then he's not really getting help from the tank. The tank is like count like. like moving back to protect the support and it's just really really messy overall where you see like chaos theory fragment into two or different two or three different smaller groups trying to do two or three different things so it, it makes for a much weaker push if let's say the whole team is not on the same page so i'm going to stop here because the video is going to half an hour and, and and most of the mistakes are similar i yeah and i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope uh you guys learned something from the video uh, uh yeah and yeah let's go